Everything you know about sneaker heads is wrong. Well, kind of. Now, I'm gonna preface this video by saying I'm gonna be talking about a framework by the rules that we play in. Now, when I refer to this in the video, I'm talking about the constructs that we as the market have actually put in place subconsciously that make a project succeed. So please keep that in mind when I kind of refer to it. Now, when it comes down to sneaker heads, uh, if you're in the NFT space, you've come across this. If you're not in the NFT space, you've come across this. This project is hyped. Now, what I mean hyped, it's like proper hyped. We've got 185 thousand followers on Twitter, and the giveaways go off as you would expect. So this giveaway, uh, sort of almost 28 thousand retweets, crazy. But what is nice here? We're going. We've got some likes just on random posts. They aren't just doing giveaway after giveaway. They are actually kind of doing regular tweets, and these tweets are getting. Three and a half thousand likes, three and a half, two and a half, uh, sort of two and a half, two and a half. They're getting a lot of traction and a lot of actual momentum. And it's crazy the fact that this project actually does have the hype and they're not just doing giveaway after giveaway and they actually are kind of putting out some content. So it shows that the market is actually kind of looking at this project in a way. Now, the two people that I want to touch on when it comes down to sneaker heads is Faris. He is the marketing head behind the project. And then we've got Ali, which is the artist. Now, I'm going to start off with Faris and then go to Ali, which then touches on the art later. 3,000 followers on Twitter doesn't seem like much. Now, with Faris, I actually had a call with him. We had a call to speak about sneaker heads and kind of for me to get an idea about what sneaker heads was, who the team were behind it, ask some questions. Now, when I spoke to Faris, this was actually done over a video call. Now, this is a little bit strange because in the NFT space, we're usually kind of doing just a voice call on Discord. Faris is in his kind of 30s, and it really kind of shows you the kind of person they are when they kind of want to book something into a calendar uh, and then also do a video call because I think that kind of shows a lot. It shows the transparency. So with this call with Faris, um, we were able to kind of touch on some information. So when I kind of have some insights about sneakerheads and how it's actually playing out, this is because it's firsthand information from Faris. Now his Twitter account, it is what it is. But what you'll notice here is it goes uh, 2K credit snap ad. So Faris actually is partnered with Snapchat to actually kind of run um, media for uh, brands, things like that. And this is his actual um, Snapchat business account. Now, the reason I bring this up is it shows that uh, he hasn't created a fake persona. He hasn't created a fake profile. He actually, this is who he is. This is what he does. So it adds more weight and legitimacy when it comes to uh, the marketing aspect of sneakerheads. Now, when we have a look over at his Instagram account, nothing fancy here. He's only got two posts, which is a little bit strange for someone that's meant to be in kind of marketing and social media, but that is how it is. Then we get to LinkedIn, 500 connections, which is good. And it looks like he's actually active when it comes to LinkedIn. Now look, if someone's personal account on Instagram isn't popping, yeah, that's fine. But if their LinkedIn is popping, I, I, I hold this with a little bit more weight. The fact is he's actually out here doing stuff on LinkedIn. One day ago, he's like this. Um, a couple more days ago, he's like this. He's actually on LinkedIn doing some work. He's got um, sort of almost 1,700 followers on LinkedIn, and he's actually putting out some work on LinkedIn. So um, people kind of trust the, a LinkedIn brand. So having uh, his name and um, image attached to his LinkedIn profile, is very important. Now, one thing that you will kind of notice is that he's got his clone X here. Now, what I've actually done is I've actually gone over to OpenSea, found his clone X to have a look at some of his history to see if he has been in the space like he said he was. What you can actually do, you can have a look at it. You then go to sales. What we can then do is have a look and see what sales he's actually had over the past sort of uh, little bit. And we can see here, World of Women, we've got the Gucci, uh, Rug Radio, Muri, uh, Adidas, he's kind of uh, sold that. He's been in some of these. These are just his sales. We can see what he's been doing. Five months ago, this is when he kicked off. Um, uh, 1989 Sisters, um, that's actually a bit of a play right there from him. Uh, pretty smart. I uh, should have actually kind of held onto it because that actually did a bit of a pop. Now, the reason I'm kind of blasting through this and showing you this is this is what I do when I'm doing my research. Now, I spoke to Faris and then doing this little dive afterwards gives me confidence in what he has said, which is really good. 
Now, one thing that I want to touch on before we get to uh, the Sneakerheads Twitter page again is I want to touch on Ali because it's a very good segue from the art into the marketing aspect. Now, Ali's got 23,000 followers on Twitter and he's only been uh, joined since February, but this will make sense when I touch on the Instagram account. Now, Ali is putting out some um, content, behind the scenes stuff, what you'd kind of expect when it comes down to Twitter. But as you're scrolling through Twitter, it does have very Instagram type vibes. When we actually have a look at his Instagram page, uh, we can see here 30,000 followers. Now, I do believe this would be another follow through from the sneakerheads, but he actually does have a career as an artist or as a creative in the past. So what you will notice here with his uh, body of work is he has been doing this for a long time and we can start to see the idea of where sneakerheads has come from when we kind of get to around the, these types of images. Now, I know this isn't a sneaker, but we're starting to get the head motif, the idea that he's starting to put pieces together that could be kind of drawing inspiration from. Now, one crucial thing that I really want to draw on is the fact that we've got this one, Kanye West. This was in January 2021. This was a year ago. A year ago, he'd made some of these concepts. Now, I find this crazy and um, important because this is something that he has done. And we're going March 2021. This is something that he has done um, a while back. This isn't like he's just wanted to rip up a project going, what can we kind of do to kind of uh, sell, it, sell out an NFT? This is something that he has done. It's something that he's kind of got in his repertoire per se and something that has been drawn on. Now, when it comes down to Ali and Faris, they're actually connected with um, uh, a couple of other people that have been in the NFT space that have kind of um, connected in different circles and then they came together because Ali knows that he had some quality art and Faris knows that he had some really good um, sort of marketing skills. The two came together with um, a couple of others and were able to kind of form what has we've come to know as sneakerheads. Now, there are going to be some things that um, OGs in the space, people that have been in the space, people that have seen a lot of things before may see as red flags, but I actually feel more comfortable about this after speaking to Faris. And this is where I get down to the framework. The fact is they've got 185,000 followers starting in February. So it's a month in and they've got almost almost 200,000 followers and they've got a verification check mark. Now, what is crazy about sneakerheads is that it blew up very fast, very quickly. And everyone in the space, all of my peers, all of the guys that I know were like, hey, where did this come from? It came out of nowhere. Now, when I spoke to Faris about this, what he said is he says that he knows that for a project to be taken seriously, for a project to be taken as a legitimate project, they need to have the hype. They need to have the following for people to then even consider it. Because if sneakerheads had 33 followers on Twitter, people would not uh, sort of take a second look at it. So he knew the importance of playing within that framework. The fact that you need to run up as much um, sort of hype and followers as you can to then actually kind of hit a cruise mode so people then take you legitimately when you actually kind of show what the art is. Now, the other aspect is the check mark. To get a check mark within a month, that is something that is very crazy. But the idea is that, um, and Faris didn't say anything about it, um, but he says that it was important for uh, the check mark to be there to add more weight and legitimacy. Now, where it came down to uh, the conversation with Faris is he was saying that the following, the check mark, um, all of these kinds of things, he doesn't want to do them, he almost has to do them because he knows what the consumers want. And this comes down to you and me um, only looking at particular projects and only trusting particular projects because of the followers, because of a check mark, because of hype. So he's backwards engineered what people actually pay attention to and then gone, okay, I will construct a project to be put in front of those people so it will be guaranteed to kind of gain some traction and gain some sort of momentum and and essentially success. So when, uh, after speaking to Ferris about sneakerheads and how all of this came together, this is where I started to really understand what Ferris was doing and what Ali want to do um, when it comes to an NFT and how they're actually positioning it. They understand 
what is actually happening with the NFT space, what gains the attention. Now, another example about playing within that framework is the fact that this image here, Travis Scott, if you're into sneakers and you know Travis Scott, you uh, this resonates with you. This isn't going to be in the collection. This is just a, essentially a marketing stunt. When we have a look at this, we get Kanye West, we get a Yeezy. The idea is that they understand what the framework is. They understand what's gonna grab the attention, what's gonna make people consider the project, which then means that they can then gain that attention, gain those followers, and then start to build that hype. So I can't fault Farris for what he has done when it comes down to the marketing of this project. We as a community have defined what a successful project looks like and how a successful project will kind of gain attention and gain traction. And all he has done is he's just shown a mirror of what we actually want and we have then flocked towards it. Now, what I know is I know that there's some people out there that won't agree with the tactics that he's used, that won't agree with the marketing material that they've used. And I understand that from uh, uh, an, an outsider's perspective because what they have done with sneakerheads is very web two, it isn't very web three. But the uh, thing that I keep coming back to in the back of my mind is the fact that sneakerheads is working, it's gaining this hype, it's gaining this momentum because what we have done is we have crafted um, a framework of what we want to see and they are just playing us to a T. Now, it may sound like I'm saying uh, kind of bad things about it and I don't believe in the project, but now I kind of want to touch on why this also makes sense longer term. When I did speak to Faris about the project, they're not going to be releasing for another month or two. Right now, they could drop a project, they could sell out, make a bunch of money and run. Faris wants to then ensure that they build this project up nice and solid. They want to make sure that when it launches, it launches well, it launches good. They're doing some very good collaborations here. Now, I find this very important because when I did have the initial conversation with Faris, this wasn't him trying to shill sneakerheads. What Faris was doing, and this is very smart, it was like he was the new kid at school. It was like he was the new guy at the party. What he was doing is he was like introducing himself. He's like, hey, Nate, I'm Faris. Here's what I'm doing at Sneakheads. If you've got any questions, ask me some questions. I ask some questions. He didn't want me to um, essentially, he wasn't like, hey, Nate, I want you to make this video. He's like, I just want to give you the information. So if you make the video, you can make an informed video. He then went around and he's had the same conversations with the other people within the space. So some of my peers, the idea is he's essentially trying to position himself in a way not to shield sneakerheads, but to just clear the air, to give everyone the information that they need. So um, influencers and people like me can put out content that actually truly reflects what sneakerheads is. And when I spoke to my boy Crypto Gorilla, he actually had to speak to Ferris and he got good vibes from it. The idea of what uh, Ferris and Ali are doing with sneakerheads is very smart. They come, they, they're taking their time, they're doing it right, but they're also playing the game that we've essentially set and the rules that we've set and they're playing by the rules to essentially kind of get in front of us and to build that hype. So I guess what I'm trying to say here is that if you're considering sneakerheads as a project to kind of move in on, or you're just looking at it and you're thinking it's a scam, you're thinking it's a rug, you think it's just gonna do the same thing over and over, what you need to consider is what they're actually building behind the scenes. You need to look at what they're doing and not how they're doing it. Because what Faris has said that they're doing is they want to build a brand, they want to be doing collaborations, they want to turn this into something that can be bigger than just an NFT. Now I know that this is kind of, um, I essentially roll my eyes when people say they want to build a brand because that's essentially what everyone says. The word brand and the word community in the NFT space have just become saturated. But the um, way that they're moving actually looks like they're trying to build somewhat of a brand. Because I think a piece of content like this to actually kind of dive deep onto a project that has a lot of speculation on it is very good to kind of clear the air and give you an insight into what the project actually may be. So hopefully you found value in this video. If you did, please consider hitting up that subscribe button while you're down there. Also hit up the like button. As always, it's been a pleasure having you with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.